Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this week's video, we are talking about butt connectors. Not something we use a whole lot in pro audio, honestly, but these can be really, really handy, I would think, if you have no other options. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at them here. It wouldn't be my first choice on how to repair a cable. I don't do a whole lot of cable repair in the field. Usually when something breaks in the field, it's at a connector. It's generally not in the middle of a piece of cable, but that does happen occasionally. Uh, as one show in particular that I do that uh, the year before I was there, uh, they actually had the the snake and some SDI cable get run over by a lawnmower. The work that I do anyway, we don't do a whole lot of butt connections in live sound. Maybe it's something in the install world that you see more of, but again, in my experience there is we're making connections, even uh, troubleshooting, we're making those connections at connectors where the cable terminates. In any event, you probably have far more ideas of how to use these than I will. To look at them in more detail, we've got a number of different sizes, and these are available all over the web, all over Amazon and eBay, so I'll leave some links down below. Now I've given some of these out already and I've lost the outer packaging off of this set. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the branding was on these, but they all look identical online. So from what I can see, they tend to come in these four common sizes. And that is the 10 to 12 uh, gauge. And these are American wire gauge numbers. So 10 to 12 AWG, 14 to 16. Then we've got, uh, let's see, 18 to 22 and then 26 to 24. But we're going to try the 22 gauge and the 12 gauge and see what happens. Let's break down what these actually consist of. So you can see the whole thing is a heat shrink tube and in the center, the silver part that is firm, that is low temperature melt solder in there. And then these two colored bands and they, you can see them in different colors in blue. Uh, these ones have little white bands and these have kind of a yellowy band, but those two bands are a heat activated adhesive to create a waterproof seal. So you insert your wire here, uh, you would uh, heat that up, and as it heats up, it's going to melt the solder, it's going to reduce the size of the heat shrink, and also uh, melt this adhesive and activate it to create a waterproof seal so water doesn't run back up. So pretty comprehensive, and sounds like it really ought to do the trick if it does what it says it does. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, so I guess you could stack those three up, and it's going to be kind of, kind of big, but generally, when you're doing splice connections like this, you're going to want to stack them so you could end up with them in a much uh, more compact fashion. All right, we've pushed them together. These don't hold because they're 22 gauge cable, and this is an absolute joke. So then we slide this over top, position that band so it's over the joint there, and now we need to apply some heat. That is pretty rough, my goodness. So uh, those didn't really seal. The solder worked. This didn't seal at all. Yeah, the whole situation has just gone kind of cloudy there. This, I mean, just what a sh what a mess though. Like so, there there we go. In an emergency, sure, this would work. It it definitely. Let's just make sure we made a good uh, connection there. Yeah, okay, so that makes a connection, that's fine. Let's try it one more time, but this time instead of the uh, the heat gun, go with the more traditional uh, lighter, see if that works. All right, so it's in there. I mean, it looks like shit, but it's in there, so. Again, we're just using the heat from a lighter, because, you know, because if I had more tools at my disposal, I would probably not use this connector. <laughs> See, so yeah, with more localized heat, it certainly does seem to fare a little bit better. But again, I would argue that this red, ow, let's let it cool, I suppose. You know, let's test it. Let's make sure. Yep, that works. So it certainly does the job. Like, it certainly, like, I'm... I'm trying pretty hard and I can't get, seem to get that apart. So yeah, it certainly works in an emergency, I, you know. So let's step it up a little bit. Two equal ends. Let's crop those nice and tidy. Now let's get our 12 gauge and these are gonna be the big guys. I'm almost of the mind that I should 
use an un one size lower than what I think I need just from what the last one looked like. But we'll do this again. Just push those together, right? Just like that. And then just kind of flatten down the, the bristly bits there, right? Bring our connector back over. I'm going to go with the heat gun one more time. So let's fire it up. So everything is melting so far. I don't see the solder melting though. Yeah, that didn't work at all. <laughs> well, now we're hitting it uh, again. Higher setting. Solder still doesn't look to be melting. That. Total fail. I mean, if I couldn't do it with that, I doubt this is going to make much of a difference, but let's see. And they suggested like a, there's a video online that suggests like a butane torch. Uh, geez. Nothing. I mean, I'm like really up on this. I'm, I'm scorching the, uh, I'm scorching the whole situation here. This is not Oh yeah. I'm gonna see if it actually melted onto that copper wire even a little bit. And on this end, I'm gonna have to say no, not really. That, I mean, it's a hell of a bear to get out. The adhesive really works, but that copper is completely bare. And did we melt any to this end? No, the copper is also absolutely, so yeah, copper is absolutely clean. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. I'm going to try a 16 to 14, maybe. Let's see if one of these does any better, if it even fits. Again, I'm not really sure if that solder's melted at all. Yeah. <laughs> Just came right apart. Definitely didn't melt the solder. That didn't solder anything. And that's, again, that's just a lot of heat that I put on this thing. Like, look at that. There. I mean, it was starting to melt. Again, everything else in here worked. So the heat shrink worked. The adhesive looks like it worked. And then, yeah, the solder melted here a little bit, but you can see not all the way. Like, that's still in the f shape of the form it came in. Doesn't seem like it penetrated very far. So that is it for this video on these butt connectors. You know, maybe the smaller guys are handy to have in a situation where you just need to splice like a single lead. But uh, in the situation like an XLR where you'd have to put three of these in, uh, by the time you stack them up, this is going to be uh, really tedious. It does work, but you, you might as well just solder them and do it the traditional way. For 12 gauge cable, I wouldn't fool with it. It's a complete waste of time in my opinion. Now, I'd love to hear what I did wrong. Let me know if you have some miraculous uh, tip for how to make these actually work. Uh, I'd be interested to hear that. Please be ready to show us an example if you claim these are uh, amazing. I'd love to see how to get them to work. Don't just tell me, oh, you're doing it wrong. Let us all learn, please. I would love to know if there is some trick to these that I am just not getting. Again, the small ones seem to do an okay job. If that's a function you need, if that's something you need, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the new background. I'm still kind of working on it, but I think it's better than that gray uh, cloth that we had on this side of the workshop before. So hopefully this looks better. Hopefully you like it and uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you all over on the website at dcsoundup.com. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.